we're looking at uh, challenging things, interesting, challenging things that were said by people in the Bible. And this morning we're going to look at something that was said by a guy named Moses. You all know who Moses is, right? Yeah. And uh, this is found in the book of Exodus chapter 4, verse 13. I invite you to take your Bible and open it up to Exodus 4, verse 13. Now that's where we're going to land, but we gotta, i got to lead us into that first. So that's where we're going, but just to open that up and hold it there and, and relax for a minute, um, I'm going to provide sort of a summary. I, I try to make it a, a kind of a quick summary. It's a pretty lengthy story of God talking to Moses and calling Moses. This actually begins in Exodus at the beginning of Exodus chapter 3. So I'm going to, again, leave out some details, but just kind of sum it up and give a, a, a little bit of a, uh, a paraphrase of what happens with Moses. And really it's, it's interesting because God calls Moses to lead the people of Israel. And frankly, Moses has a lot of objections to that. He's like, I, I'm not the guy for this. I, and God's, you know, well, there, I'm telling you what to do. And Moses is like, I can't do it, don't want to do it. So let me give you... Uh, my paraphrase, again, I will leave some details out, but I just want to kind of give you the gist of the story because I think that helps set up what we're going to read. So, if you go back to uh, Exodus chapter 3, we start, and Moses is, he's uh, with his father-in-law's sheep. He's, he's a shepherd for his father-in-law. Paul was reminding me after the first service, I, I had kind of forgotten about this detail, but Moses is a fugitive. He's, uh, he's trying to lay low a little bit, and uh, he would prefer not to uh, draw too much attention to himself. So anyhow, Moses is uh, out there just with the sheep, doing what shepherds do. He's kind of minding his own business, and uh, all of a sudden he sees this bush burning, like just engulfed with flames, this bush. But when something's burning, we all know how this works, it burns and burns, and pretty soon it burns up. The fire consumes whatever is burning. Well, this bush is just burning white hot. It's going like crazy, but it doesn't get consumed by the fire. And so that's kind of a curious thing, very strange. So Moses thinks, well, let me get a little, get a little closer and check this out. As Moses gets closer, again, I'm leaving out details, but I'm just kind of giving you the, the quick version of the story. As Moses gets closer to the bush, all of a sudden, God calls to Moses from this bush, this burning bush, here comes the voice of God. And, and God basically says to Moses, I've seen the oppression of my people, people of Israel, lo these many years in Egypt, and I'm going to rescue them. It's time to bring them out of this bondage in Egypt. We're taking them out. And Moses, you're the guy. You're my leader. You're going to be the one to lead them out of Egypt. And this is where Moses' objections begin. God called Moses. Moses has objections. Actually, in a way, his objections, from a sort of an intellectual standpoint, his objections are kind of fair. The, the objections that Moses has. And again, you can't say no to God, but I'm just saying if you're just thinking, you know, with just your mind and, and sort of a reason, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 11, Moses first objects to God, saying, Who am I? Who am I to do this? I'm going to go trace him up to Pharaoh? I, 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 I mean, who am I? I'm, not, I'm nobody. Who am I to be leading the people of Israel to that objection? God says, I'll be with you. Relax. I'll be with you. I'll be there. Chapter 3, verse 13, Moses has another objection. Moses says, well, <laughs> I go walking up to all these people and say, oh, God sent me. Here I am. I'm from God. They're going to say, what's this God's name? Who's this God you're talking about? What? God. God who? God responds to that objection, telling Moses, here's what you say. I am who I am. That's who sent me. When they ask for my name, this is God to Moses, tell them, I am has sent me. That's chapter 3, verse 14. That's probably a whole sermon in itself that's very interesting. Now, at this point in the story, we're still in chapter 3 of Exodus, then God provides a bunch of details to Moses about how to proceed and what's going to happen and how this is going to unfold. And that takes us all the way to the end of chapter 3 of Exodus. And then in chapter 4, verse 1, Moses starts with the objections again. I can't do this. Moses says, but what if they don't listen to me? What if they don't listen to what I have done? Well, again, who am I? What if they don't believe me? What if they don't listen to me? 
God responds to that objection by telling Moses, okay, you got that shepherd's staff, right? Remember what a shepherd's staff? Got the little hook on it so you can pull people off stage. Got that shepherd's staff? He goes, I'm going to use that staff of yours, Moses, in, in ways that people realize this is God. This is only God can do that. Again, we're just a paraphrase here. We're not covering all the details, just the gist of the story. Well, believe it or not, <laughs> Moses objects again. He just keeps coming up with these objections. By the way, think about this. Moses' basic general first reaction, his initial response to God calling him to leadership is not, boy, this is fantastic. I'm going to be the big guy. I'm going to be in charge. Woo-hoo! Yes! What a, I'm going to have this tremendous leadership position over the whole nation of Israel. Man, oh man, this is thrilling. That's not his response. Moses, and by the way, give him a little bit of a break. He knows that what God's calling him to do is impossible. But I just, you know, I think about the world that we live in where so many people fight to be in the positions of leadership, spend huge amounts of money to be in leadership positions. Moses is like, I prefer not. Somebody came to me after the 9 o'clock service and they said, I think we might do better if we had more leaders who were humble like Moses and really didn't even want to be a leader but, would, but felt called like they had to do it. I said, that's a good point. I think you might be right. But Moses, he just, he feels like, I'm not the guy. For this job, I'm not the guy. So Moses' next objection, he's got another objection. This one is in chapter 4, verse 10, and this one's actually kind of practical. Moses says, I'm, I'm no good with words. I can't talk. You know this, Lord. I'm not a smooth talker. You need, you need somebody who can really deliver it. I, I, I'm not the guy for this assignment. God responds to that objection saying, really something that only God could say. God says, who makes mouths? Moses says, I, I, got, I can't talk. I can't talk. Who makes a person's mouth, God says. Kind of shoots that one down. God goes on and he tells him, look, Moses, I'll be with you as you speak. In fact, I will tell you what to say. I'll instruct you what to say. Moses, the objections are all getting shot down. And that brings us then to the phrase that I want to kind of zero in on. Now you kind of have a little bit of an understanding of everything. Again, this wasn't all the details, but kind of what led up to this. So now we're at Exodus chapter 4, verse 13. You got your Bible there, and that's where we have these words. But Moses again pleaded, he's begging, please, Lord, please send anyone else. Someone else, please. Please. Again, I think in a way, Moses really sort of understood the magnitude of what he was being asked to do. You can't do this. You're going to go to the, the most powerful man on earth, Pharaoh, and tell him, I'm taking all your slave labor away. Sorry, we got, we got to be going now. It ain't going to happen. And uh, again, I think Moses kind of sees that. I was looking at a website that deals with history this past week. History. And they had this page on this website of the most famous leaders from antiquity. I don't think this was necessarily a ranking of them, like here's the greatest or the most prominent, but it just was a listing of all these great leaders, prominent leaders, famous leaders from history. You know who was at the top of the list? Moses. Moses, this guy is recognized as one of the most famous leaders, some would argue, one of the greatest leaders in all of human history. And here we find him, this is the beginning of his leadership journey. He's being called to leadership, and he's not interested. No, thank you. Doesn't believe he's capable. I'm not capable of this. I can't do this. He's literally being called by God from a burning bush, the voice of God, and he still objects five times. Please, please, Lord. Some, there's got to be somebody besides me. It's a curious beginning for one of the most famous leaders who's ever begun, who's ever lived, wouldn't you say? He's one of the most famous leaders, and that's how he starts. That's how, the, that's how his operation gets going. So we got this long account, God calling Moses. Moses, very, very reluctant, doesn't want to do it, objecting. I think part of the struggle here, this, isn't, this doesn't completely explain it, 
But part of the struggle here is that Mo Moses is focused, you can hear it in his objections, he's focused on the outcome. He's, all, he's already at the outcome. Here's why this can't happen. This is, no, this is crazy. Uh, how would I ever possibly do this? And I think God wants him, at least initially, to just focus on obedience. Mm -hmm. Moses is already at outcome, and God's like, no, 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 obedience. First, obedience. By the way, I understand this outcome focus. I get it. It's a very natural tendency. If you or I were given an assignment, if we were given some task, if we were given some big, big project, pretty quickly we would start thinking, how am I ever going to do this? Is this even possible to do this? This is a big deal. What is, look at all the things that are standing in the way of me doing this. Don't you get that? Isn't that where you would be? Say yes. Yeah, yeah. But when we're dealing with God, now I'm very specifically this morning, I'm not talking about any project you're ever involved in. I'm very specifically talking this morning about if it's a calling from God. In Moses' case, the calling was very clear, dramatic, burning bush, the voice of God. In our case, I will grant, there will probably be times for us where we'll be called by God and it won't be, it's not going to be that dramatic. It may take a little bit of time for us to get clear on it. But when we're dealing with God, there's a condition here. When we're dealing with God, if we're clear that God is calling us, then we need to be obedient. If God's calling, the answer is yes. Right? Yes, Lord. It's God. Yes, Lord. Again, I, I, we look at Moses, and I think we have a tendency to do this too. We focus on the, uh, these outcomes instead of the obedience. Most of Moses' objections come from this place of outcome. Who am I? How am I going to lead these people? So I'm talking about how this is going to happen. God's like, no, 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 no. Just be obedient. Do what I told you to do. What if they don't believe me? What if they don't? You know, you're, see, Moses, you're down here with this. We're going to get to that. We're going to have to deal with that. But right now, I just need you to say yes. Yes, Lord. You tell, Lord, you tell me what to do. He's getting at the outcome, right? Instead of dealing with obedience to God. When God calls us, this is conditional. What I'm talking about this morning is conditional. If it's really a calling from God, our response, the proper response is obedience. The first issue is not how we're going to get there, what's the outcome. The first issue is yes. Yes to Lord, to the Lord. I've told this story a couple of times already in church, so this is kind of a rerun for some of you, I know, but it just I've thought about it a couple of times this week when I was thinking about this thing of calling and being obedient. Um, many years ago, I was really struggling in ministry, and just things weren't going well in, in a number of different ways, and I really felt like I was failing. Um, a lot of it was just my own stuff, but that's how I felt anyhow. And I really uh, have been talking to a couple people about, like, maybe it would just be better if I dropped out of pastoral ministry, at least for a time. Just kind of dropped out for a while. Um, not, not leaving God, not, not walking away from God, but just from being a pastor. And a friend of mine who is a minister heard that I was discouraged, and uh, he called. He lives in another state. He called to talk to me. Great guy. Wonderful guy. Some of you know him. His name is Danny. He was a youth pastor at this church many years ago. So Danny calls me, we're talking on the phone. He's a big guy, but he's very, he just has this gentle, loving soul, this gracious soul. And he had some kind words for me. Um, Danny's the kind of guy that like, if you were really discouraged, this is the guy you'd want to be talking to. Some of you guys you know what I mean, because you know him. So we're, uh, we're talking and uh, at one point in our conversation, I told Danny words to this effect. I said, it's, it's just such a mess here. It might, it, I think it just might be better for me to resign. It might be better for me not to be a pastor right now. And Danny, um, he said, uh, kind of, he just kind of took me through a little lesson. Very simple little lesson. He said, uh, you've been called by God to do this, haven't you? And I said, I, I believe that I have. Yes, I believe that. And he said, so simple. He said, has God released you from the calling? And I said, 
you know, Danny, I'm, I'm so hurt and just so, I, I don't know for sure, but I said, I, I don't believe that I've heard from God in any specific way that I've heard from God that he has released me from this. And Danny said, then you can't leave. And, and, and by the way, no meanness. No, hey, you can't, you, nothing, that wasn't like that. It was just very matter of fact. Very loving. The way you would say, oh, it's raining out. Just that matter of fact, you can't leave. He didn't release you. I was not getting, <laughs> believe me, I was not getting the outcome I hoped for in ministry. It's happened a few times since then, too. <laughs> two or three, two or three times this morning, I haven't gotten the outcome. Um, but obedience is first. Not what I think the outcome is. Obedience to God is first. If God has called you to something, the first factor is obedience. Moses asked God. He's really he's begging God, please, please, please send someone else. Moses could not imagine how, the, how this can't turn out good. There's no way this can turn out right. This will not, this is going to be a disaster. I, they're never going to listen to me. Who am I? I can't even speak clearly. This is going to be, I'm not the guy. This is a, this is a disaster waiting to happen. But God wasn't calling somebody else. God was calling Moses. By the way, does God know exactly what he's doing? Oh. <laughs> is God like, oh, you're right, Moses. What was I thinking? Oh, man, you're right. I'm, let me get this other. No. God's calling Moses. God knows exactly, he always knows exactly what he's doing. Whatever he's called you or I to, he knows exactly what he's doing. God didn't say this in these specific words. This isn't in the text, but I think it, would, it wouldn't be inconsistent to imagine God saying this to Moses. Don't worry about the outcome, Moses. You're, you're, way, you're already way too far ahead. I'm, we're gonna, we'll get to that. I, we're going to handle that. But what I want from you right now, Moses, is yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You've called? Yes, Lord. Now, it's very possible that at this point, there may be some people thinking, whew, <laughs> this is good. Wow. Uh, this, this, I, I, I dodged a bullet here because this doesn't apply to me. Good sermon, Dan. Doesn't apply to me. I haven't been called by God to lead any big enterprise out of Egypt. I haven't been called to be a pastor or anything like that. So this sermon is a nice one, Dan, but it applies to other people. <laughs> and it does not apply to me. Actually, it may be true that you're not called to lead a big group of people. You may not be called to some extraordinary achievement with some nation. You may not be called to an official position like being a pastor. But I want to tell you this morning, you have been called by God. Amen. Every person in this room, every person who's watching, you've been called by God. Let me say it again. You have been called by by God. You know that, right? Say yes. Yeah. yeah. You've been called. I hear, I'll give you some examples. This is not exhaustive, but here's a couple of examples. You've been called to respond to the truth of Jesus and who he is, and you've been called to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Will you admit your sins? Will you admit that you need forgiveness? Will you acknowledge Jesus as Lord? We've all been called. Everybody, the fact that you're here this morning means you've been called to say yes to the truth of Jesus. Will you respond and say yes to Jesus in that way? Yeah. You say, well, I, I don't, yeah, but this, and yeah, but I've got objections, and I don't, I don't even know if I can live a Christian life. I, 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 I. Remember? Your way at outcomes. Initially, the response is, yes, Jesus, I need you. That's first. Be concerned with obedience first. God has called you. He has called you. Put your faith in Christ Jesus. Will you say yes? I'll give you another one. Just give you a couple examples. We've all been called to love God and love others. Right. Everybody here. There's not, there's not an exception in the room, not an exception to anybody online. Everybody here has been called to love God and love others. Jesus said it's the most important commandment. Matter of fact, if you do that, Jesus says you'll, you'll end up keeping all the other commandments if you'll do that one. 
So the command from God to love is a calling. It's a calling on our lives. Love God, love others. Can you say, Dan, can you be a little more precise? That's kind of broad. Love, love others. What, who am I supposed to love? Well, according to the Bible, the answer would be everyone. Everyone? Yeah. You say, Dan, I don't even like most of the people I know. How the world am I going to love them? Well, that's going to involve a surrender to God and a work of God in us. Actually, the way that it... It, actually, it involves God's love becoming operational in our lives. God's love through us. But again, don't worry about how am I, but I hate this guy. How am I going to love him? You're, you're jumping ahead. Yes, Lord. I recognize, you recognize that God has called you to love everyone? You recognize it? The answer then to God's calling is yes. It's going to be hard, but yes. I could go, you get the point. I could go on, but the, we've all been called by God. Maybe not to some Moses type leadership role, not to some pastoral thing, but God has called us to him. He's called us to discipleship. He's called us to live a life with him, for him, for his glory. Don't get too caught up initially with, can I do this? How am I going to ever do it? Look at all the obstacles. This I'm not even sure this is even possible. This seems way beyond me. I, 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 I. Yes, Lord. Yes. I know something because I've done this for a long, long, long time. I know that some of us have been called to things by God. And we've been afraid. And some of us probably didn't do what God told us to do because we were afraid. I know the feeling. I know. God's initial, his, the first thing that he told Moses was, I'll be with you. If God calls you to something, and you're kind of, you're afraid to even try it, could you do it if God is with you? Yes. Now, like, think about God and who God is. God. Could you do it if God is with you? Yes. yes. First, be willing to say what I just heard a lot of people say right now. Yes, Lord. Your call I say, yes. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done in my life. Yes, Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Would you stand, please?